actually last week I got in, I'm really happy because I had plants that I rescued from my garden centre way before we closed. It's about three or four years and they were looking a bit rough so I bought them myself for a quid off our own rescue table. Now that one there is a verbena, for Laura. no it's not, it is a viburnum davidii so it's got lovely scented blooms now that was waiting for ages and it really struggled I left it in the pot all last summer and it was such a warm summer and, and early autumn that I felt I really couldn't plant it out and then it got left over the winter again for the second year running so I finally put it in last week and then further down where that verbena is that I'm going to tidy in a minute there's also a lilac again waited for three years to come out of the pot um, it wasn't looking its best so I sort of put it in the situ, both of them I put in the situ where I wanted them to go so they could get used to it. There you go, that's the lilac I was just talking about, which I have put in the last couple of days. And actually it's already flourishing. There was only a little bit of foliage on the top and a little bit down here and it's just flourished and opened up since I put it in so I am very excited about how that's going to come on so today we are tackling this which I've put off since last November so this is reality guys this is not Instagram this is reality so I put this off and off and off and off I can't grow stuff in here any earlier than now because I have a massive gap here and the plastic I put up last year, well, the year before last is now perished. Another window got broken in the summer. That's all gone and broken, perished. So I've not got the plastic. I haven't been able to sew anything any earlier. So it's given me an excuse to put it off, but now we are heading into May at the weekend. So hopefully slightly warmer weather and I've got propagators anyway, which would be perfectly fine even with the gaps in the windows. So I just need to crack on, have a good tidy and a sort. Yeah, and uh, hopefully this greenhouse will be looking a lot better shape by later this afternoon. Oh, also uh, we've now got a shed, which we didn't have before. So that does mean that my pots my chems and birds, not that I've got many of those anymore. Um, propagator lids, tools, polystyrene that I use for the base of pots, all of that can go nice and neatly and properly in the shed. Right, so I'm going to stop procrastinating now and talking to you, and I'm just going to get on with it. So here we go. Wish me luck. So we are about a third of the way through, and I've got rid of the old, horrid looking tomatoes and the grey bags and the, all the little old pots of chilies and stuff that died off here. I've also, I'm saving out, well I'm actually splitting out all the plant material there and then any old compost, which won't be good for potting, but it'll be great to put in my lovely vegetable garden over there because it needs filling up, but it's sunk a little bit since we made it up last year. So anything that I can put in there will help, even if it's old dry compost, it can go in there and help fill it up and fill it out. So that's where I am so far. I haven't quite earned a coffee yet. So I'm now going to clear all this, give it a good brush sweep, tidy, same on this side. And I'm going to go and grab the shed key and get rid of all of this, have a sort through, make sure it's all okay. Yeah, and then I can put that all in the shed out the way and then yeah, we're in a good position to start maybe doing some seed sowing this afternoon, I hope. I shall crack on. So I want my coffee and cake and I need to do more work to earn that. Right, I couldn't resist. It is now coffee time, but we've done a lot of clearing. So lots of debris, lots of old compost and soil. Nice brush up there, bit of rubbish to go, tools. So I'm gonna try and de-rust some of my tools. I've had no choice but to keep them in here because we haven't had storage, but now we have. So I'm gonna get some tool oil and I've got a bit of brushing to do down there. And then pots to sort here, trays to sort there. And then now I've got the key as well for the shed, I can get all this into there as well. So all the top level is done and a little bit of that level there. So I'm gonna have my coffee whilst I start moving stuff to and from the shed, but we are starting to get there. 
slowly. It's one of those jobs where you put it off for so long because it looks awful and you think, oh, that's going to take ages. But actually, once you get going, it's not too bad. One of those. Once you're in it, once you're doing it, it's not too bad. I'll put this polystyrene in the shed as well. I use, I still use polystyrene because you can't get away at the moment. The people still use it for packaging. But I break it up and put it in the bottom of pots and hanging baskets. I find it particularly useful for cone hanging baskets because otherwise they get too heavy if you fill the whole thing with compost right down to the tip. So I use that for drainage purposes. Um, and also it fills up a bit of the cone without it being too heavy and having too much compost in so a little tip that i use there for my own baskets and ones that i sell so yep here we go i'm gonna have my little coffee and carry on cheers So if you are following me on Instagram, you will have already seen this in my stories um, either today or a couple of days ago, depending on when I post this video. So the lovely people at Rocket Grow have sent me and gifted me some wonderful selection of their product. And I'm going to bang on about it because I have seen it before. I met them at the Garden Media event back in February. I've already checked out what the compost is like and it is good, guys. It is good. So I'm really glad to be working with them. So I've got a wonderful container and basket compost, which has got three months worth of feed in there, which saves me time because I normally add in... Um, on top of the compost, I add in a slow release fertilizer. So that is wonderful for me, saving time and money. Low carbon, which is fantastic. Soil association approved, which I love. All the good things. And it is a British company. So we like that even better. And peat free and organic. All the things I like to hear and read and they will deliver it to your door. So magic mulch, that's gonna go on my circular border because there's a few things that are still just peeking up and still need a bit of a mulch, even though I'm a little bit late, but I can whack that on there and see how they get on under that. My seed and cutting compost, so I'll be using this today for tomatoes. I've got some sweet peas that I couldn't resist. <laughs> so I'm actually popping those in late, but I will be growing them in the greenhouse rather than outside straight away. Broad beans, which again, I'm a little bit late on. I was late on them last year. To be honest, I didn't put my broad beans in until May last year, like middle of May, and they were still fine. <laughs> so you know this is gardening guys this is real life gardening sometimes you don't have to do everything up front and things still work out you know life gets in the way um so i'll be using that later for that tomato seeds i've got some lettuce to grow for cut and come again rocket that i'm going to grow under glass uh, for cut and come again so that's going to come in really handy later in this vlog then this one i'm going to be using for my diy so do make sure you subscribe if i haven't bored you too much with this waffle uh, because I will be using this for all my DIY container and basket ideas for summer, which is a series I try. I haven't been brilliant keeping on top of, but this year I have no excuses. I don't have my business anymore in the garden centre, which was taking all of my time and energy for the last seven years. So I'm just doing my garden design now, which is keeping me busy enough, but it does give me more time to do some lovely DIY inspirational gardening videos for you guys. So more containers and basket ideas to come. Do subscribe, give me a like, um, and then you can keep in touch and up to date with all the stuff that I'm doing. And I just want to say thank you to Rocket Grow and Kirsty at Rocket Grow for setting me up for the season um, and also enabling me to share this with you guys. Uh, this is a good product and also... You're going to be able to see how I get on. If you watch my vlogs, you'll see how the plants respond to this lovely product that's peat free and organic um, and see how we, we genuinely really do get on with it. But like I said, I've tried it before and it's been brilliant. So it's just nice to try the full range properly. Check out my Instagram because I'll be doing stuff on stories quite a lot as we go into May and the growing season. Oh, right, I'm gonna go and get another coffee now because after all that waffle and excitement of un unboxing all of these beautiful products, I need some more energy now so I can go and do my seeds. So I am just about to sow the sweet peas that I've had in soak overnight. And I'm going to use the Rocket Grow Peat Free Seed and Cutting Compost that I mentioned earlier in my unboxing. Um, it looks good. I just thought I wanted to show you. So it's got John in it, which is really good for getting root systems going and growing. Um, great for growth, but it's, it's, it's more 
really i'd recommend it to anyone who wants like well establishment good establishment in the root systems also adds a nice bit of drainage which is great and it's also made this peat free compost nice and light and fluffy too so which is perfect for seeds and seedlings germination so those little seeds can push through their roots and shoots with ease so yeah, I'm really happy with this quality. Um, fantastic from Rocket Grow. So I look forward to putting my sweet peas in now, along with some tomato seeds tomorrow and some chili seeds as well. Yes, we are in April, but as discussed, I can't. Here you go, here's the whole look in my greenhouse. I haven't been able to do anything outside in the greenhouse because of that. So not too late not too late still april you can still sow seeds in may and they will catch up i did it last year the year before and we're fine right so i am using um upcycled toilet rolls isn't everybody i've also collected old punnets last year from strawberries and things like that raspberries these ones are strawberries let's be honest quite deep um they are the perfect size strawberry punnets proper strawberry punnets you get in a farm shop they're the proper good size to put your toilet rolls in to hold them up and stop them flopping over when you water because they do flop over they are biodegradable which is great fantastic depth for the root runners for the sweet peas i like to run those roots nice and long so better doing it in a nice long tube like this rather than in a tiny cell like this is no good really for sweet peas they will grow but won't be anywhere near as good or successful so this works really well. So these are proper strawberry punnets that you would get in like a farm shop or like a local greengrocer or something in the summer. So I've been collecting those. These will go in my propagator, which I'll show in a second, because I have a problem with mice also, as well as the temperature in my greenhouse. We're not doing very well, are we? But I know the problems and I know how to deal with them. So that's, that's what it is. And I'm going to fill up each tube, of course, with the Rocket Grow peat free organic compost for seeds and cuttings with added jod in this can't wait for this i've got my seeds so these are late i'm actually sowing these late indoors you can do them outdoors in may and april um, but i'm still doing mine indoors because of the mice well the mouse problem and the pigeon problem that we have so my greenhouse is nice and cool because obviously i've got built-in ventilation i.e it's broken excuse the mess this is from me tidying today that's all rubbish there and these are more recycling upcycling and getting ready to use in the next few days so sorry about the mess eggshells so i'll be putting a layer of eggshells on as well just to get ahead of the slugs because there's not been anything growing in here as you saw a moment ago or a few minutes ago Yet I found three slugs and two snails already in here waiting for me to sow stuff to start growing. So eggshells works for some, doesn't work for others. I just had a hilarious conversation um, with Allotment Fight Club on Instagram about these because someone had told him that they've got a qualification that they don't work. It does. I've got a qualification in horticulture. At the end of the day, it is what works for you. So do try anything any tips you get whether you think it's daft or not or things you read give it a go yourself because some things work and some things don't it doesn't matter whether you're qualified or not qualified a beginner old built-in gardener for years and years growing just give things a try and don't judge people for having a go at other things there you go i've said it i've had my little my piece i use eggshells and it works for me so highly recommend giving a go but like i say what works for me might not work for somebody else so anyway i've been collecting these they've all been washed to get rid of the egg smell and they're going to go around the tops of the tubes just to nip in the slugs and snails in the bud really before anything starts coming up they will be covered but they even got under the covers last year so um yeah they are naughty sneaky little slugs and snails in this greenhouse so anyway there we go i've also brought more tubes down because i'm going to do actual i'm actually going to do more beans this evening and then i'm wondering i'm looking at the weather report so it's actually been a bit cold we've had a mini frost a surface frost a couple of days ago this week we are in the last week of april if you're just tuning in so I'm debating whether to do the peppers or not, because again, I haven't got the heat in here. I might sow them in the orangery because it's nice and warm in there and then 
bring them out here in a couple of weeks. I think I might do that because I just want to get them sewn now um, because I am later than everybody else, which is fine. Again, it works for me and it has to work for me because I haven't got the facilities at the moment with the broken glass situation. So I think that's what I'm going to do. Sweet peas tonight because they over soak them overnight. By the way, I definitely recommend this. It does work better. I actually have done a test in the last couple of years with soaked and non-soaked and they do germinate better, quicker, um, and they have a higher germination rate as well. So I just soak mine in a little ramekin overnight, well it's almost been 24 hours actually, and you'll see the seed will go nice and plump and then they're ready to sew out. Now it is late, I've been in here all day clearing and tidying and I'll show you in a minute what I've done. Um, so, but I am going to get these in because I can't let them soak any longer than 24 hours. That is my tip for you. You can also do that with beans. You can do it with raw beans as well if you want to, but it's not really worth it. Um, but things like sweet peas, peas and runner beans are all good to soak the night before just to kick on your germination levels. So there's a little tip from me for you and what I'm just about to get up to. And I'll just show you the end result when they're all potted, sewn and watered in for the night. So I've just put two seeds in per tube, which is perfect, so there were 24 in the end, not 25 in the pack, which is fine. Uh, looking lovely, so fairly deep, about, what's that? Just under an inch, maybe an inch, inch and a half from the top, just to give them that nice bit of depth. Um, and I'm just gonna cover them over. Oh, I watered the, the compost first, by the way. The seeds are already damp because they've been soaking for 24 hours. And then I'm just gonna gently cover the top and give it a nice gentle but firm tap down. And then I'll run a very gentle bit of moisture over the top because they're already wet, they don't need loads tonight. But I will give them a little drench just to kick them off. Um, and then we'll see how the weather plays out in the next couple of days because I don't want to overwater. This greenhouse is cooler because of my built-in ventilation. Um, so it will retain the moisture a lot more than it would if it was a proper glassed up greenhouse but do you know what I like to be different so that's fine <laughs> anyway I'm going to finish covering these up and then I'll label them up do my broad beans and then I shall see you in the morning okay so just before I do go in and go to sleep for the night the broad beans are in the sweet peas are in yes I've overloaded with eggshells please feel free to comment your thoughts on this but it works for me I've actually gone around the edge of the propagator as well and the lid will be going on but the slugs and snails did find their, well, the snails didn't, but the slugs found their way in through this propagator lid last year. So I'm not taking any risks. They are ready to go when they start emerging. I cannot risk them being chewed and nibbled. I've had too many years of failures. So this is what I do and what works for me. So they're going to be tucked away under the prop for the night. It is still going to be cool in here because I've got the gap. However, I just found some bubble wrap guys. So my built-in ventilation is no longer built in. So I've just put some bubble wrap in. It's not great. It is perishing because it's an old one that I had hung up on the other side of the greenhouse. Um, but anyway, even if it lasts for a couple of weeks, whilst we need to keep it a little bit warmer in here i have still got a massive gap there and at the very bottom but it all helps so let's see how we get on with that but anyway it's, it, they'll still need the pop on just because of the mice problem that we have as well as the slugs and snails etc etc so i'm gonna label these up properly so i'm gonna write some nice labels out tonight on my upcycled mussel shells so this is all Lottie's Recycle and Upcycle. I will do a separate video on all of the things that I'm using at the moment for your inspiration in the garden. But I'm going to now come out of the seeds and show you the difference from earlier. In fact, I might step back just a bit. It's only a little greenhouse. So you can see I've moved the table that was here to there to give me height, give me two stages. Those white, well, they're like little stages but they're from Ikea they're actually to give you more space in your cupboards for tins and things and um, they're not staying there likewise those aren't staying there but I have found them really useful I tend to build them up on bricks um, and it gives a, again another layer of staging effectively and they were only cheap from Ikea I think you can still get them to this very day they come flat packed in fact I can show you one that's it flat packed there hidden in between two built ones um, and they're really easy to put together so great for your cupboards but great for your greenhouse as well if you want to create a bit more staging in fact that looks pretty 
pretty damn good there i have to say um it's just whether there's enough light but to be honest when it's all new seedlings they don't need loads of light anyway until they have germinated so i'm sorting my watering can out as well i love my pink watering can i've had it for about 20 years i'm not even joking but the rose has got clogged it's either algae or something nasty so i'm going to take that in with me and just soak it overnight in hot water and good old washing up liquid under here i've just organized all the cell trays and seed trays that are still okay yes they're plastic these ones are actually made out of recycled plastic but i have got the old black ones but i've had those for years they've served me well so i do recycle them every year that i can until they perish um these are actually old punnets again which have no holes in and i find them really good to put propagator lids on top of seed trays and such if I can find the right ones that fit um, and again it protects from my mice problem that I have and some of the slugs and snails. I've got some old broken crocs that I'm not throwing away. Um, I use them in pots but of course I always recommend that you don't unless you can be safe with them and wear gloves because they can be sharp but I'm actually going to use that one in the top maybe for a fairy garden. I'll find a slightly bigger terracotta pot and then turn that inside it um, I quite like that. I found quite a lot of ideas like that on Pinterest. So I'm really happy actually that one broke uh, with the frost because I can use it for a fairy garden. Clear plastic tub I'm keeping at the back because I use that for, again, not the propagator so much, but it keeps off the mice. So when my little sweet peas and beans and when I put other things in as well get a bit taller, but they're still quite tender for a few weeks and very tasty for young mice, um, also slugs and snails. I will keep repeating myself because those are my problems here. Um, having the taller height with the clear box um, works really well to keep them protected and keeps them a bit warmer as well until we're ready to plant out. But I used them last year um, and they're all boxes that I've had again um, for a while and then I've either got chips in or the lids don't fit or the lids are broken and they're old storage boxes from the house. So rather than throw the whole thing away, I'm using them and I have used them in the past in my greenhouse for such things. Um, so yeah, for good protectors and they keep the light coming through, of course. My toolbox, now I have got the shed, which I've just moved all the tools into. However, my toolbox, this is my key one. So to get into my shed, I have to have a key because I like to keep it all locked and safe with all the um, machinery, in this, well, not loads of machinery, but bits and bobs in there, just so nobody can wander in um, and hurt themselves. So I keep my little toolbox, which has got my essentials in it. So if I just want to come down the greenhouse, I don't have to keep going back and go, oh, I forgot the key for the shed. I've got my nice little box here with my gloves, ties, a few bits of string and my little snips in, secateurs and things like that. So that's really handy. My Alho truck, which I've had again for years, uh, served me well, which is my little... Well, it's my little truck for inside the greenhouse. So any plant debris, so from pinching out, seedlings that didn't make it, weeds, because I do have a weed problem in here due to the cracks in the ground, all goes in that little pot and then into my compost thereafter. So I've got some nice terracottas. I have an obsession with tins, guys, especially pretty tins and growing things like basil or herbs and things in them. So uh, you will see a lot of tins hanging around. Little bin for anything that unfortunately isn't recyclable which I try to steer away from as much as I can but at the moment still happens so a nice bin to keep everything tidy which will get emptied at the end of the season because it doesn't fill up that quick. I got bags full of moss down there which will be perfect for my planter DIYs which will be coming up shortly um, and I've added this shelving unit in that I did actually put in the shed um, but I didn't really need it because we've got loads of shelves in there that we bought purposely so I thought, how can I make the use of this space? So if you remember seeing it earlier, I just had this set up effectively on an old rickety table. Well, I've just found some crates, an old pacing table, the legs don't work, so I've used the top. This is such a good upcycling video without even knowing it, guys, I'm just saying. Um, old shelving unit. So I've now gained this space because that shelving unit is thinner. I can get in there quite easily. Um, that will go in the shed in the next couple of weeks. So that whole shelving unit, which I've raised up with bricks to get the light to it as much as possible, has given me that much more space. That's given me more space now. We're having that table moved up there because I just didn't have shelves up there. I've also got these still, which I did use last year. And I've moved this round where the tools were. So I've gained basically that space, that space up there, that space there, 
and then I've still got room for my potting bench. And also I've gained the bottoms because that was shoved over in the other corner over there and it was really dark and not getting any light. Um, and this is where most of the light floods in this side because of the shed and the trees this side. So by pushing it all up, I have gained the bottom shelves as well. So I've got loads to sow, lettuces. I might direct sow them actually because it might be warm enough outside for them. They're pretty tough. I've got beans to sow. Yeah, I've got quite a few things. I wanted to get my Cosmos. I've not had a very successful time with Cosmos. So I want to get that sorted as well. So yeah, that'll be in the next vlog because I think I've bored you to tears now. I'm going to leave you guys to your evening. I'm now going to go and have some food. I am absolutely feeling a little bit peckish if you haven't seen my garden tour videos do go and have a look at my channel do subscribe because i have nice calm serene videos if you would prefer not to hear me waffling and just look at pretty flowers instead take a look at my garden tour videos and thank you so much for putting up with me today guys i hope you enjoyed it i hope you saw and enjoyed a few of the tips through and along this vlog um yeah and i hope you have a lovely evening and i will see you on the next one see you soon guys bye